Okay, so now uh, the yield curve and the calculation of bond prices using the yield curve. Okay, so, so this is uh, what we're going to do next. Okay, so we are given a yield curve uh, with four years. We are given uh, four bonds, okay, with different coupon rates. Uh, so one bond with one year to maturity, another bond with two years to maturity, and so on. What is the correct bond price for each of these bonds? So for the first one, no coupon. So face value in one year divided by 7.2%, uh, 93.28. Bond B, one coupon payment after one year discounted at 7.2%. One coupon payment plus the face value received uh, in two years discounted at 7.05%, $93.58. Bond C, one coupon payment received in one year discounted at 7.2%. One coupon payment received in two years discounted at 7.05% over two years. And the face value plus one coupon payment received in three years this discounted at 6.75% over three years gives us a price of $101.91. And same thing for bond D. So we obtain a uh, price of $94.76. Once we have these prices from the yield curve, then we can calculate uh, the yield, we can compute the yield to maturity for each of these bonds. For the bond, for bond A, because bond A does not pay any coupon and only has one year, so the yield to maturity is the same as uh, the yield on the yield curve. But then for bond B, so if we discount all cash flows coming from B at the same rate, well, the rate that has to be applied is 7.05.35, which is, not, which is close to 7.05, but is not exactly 7.05. It's slightly higher than 7.05 because uh, the price uh, here is obtained by discounting the first uh, coupon payment by a rate larger than, seven, than, than, than the yield for the second payment. So the yield, so the, 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 the constant yield to maturity to be used the discount bound B uh, actually is 7.05%. What does this mean? A bond trader buying B and waiting uh, and keeping the bond until its maturity will realize an annual return of 7.05% over the next two years. Uh, for bond C, if I use always the same rate to discount the future cash flows, and I want this rate to be such that the price obtained is the same price as the one we have obtained with the yield curve. Well, the yield to maturity that is consistent with uh, the yield curve price is 6.77.52%. What does that mean? So a bond trader buying bond C and keeping the bond for the full three years will realize an annual return of 6.77.5, We take bond D, if we discount every single payment of D with a unique uh, annual rate, well, this unique annual rate has to be 6.5306%, meaning that a bond trader buying D and keeping it until the end will realize an annual return of 6.53% over each of the next four coming years. Now, if we have a series of bonds, and with these bonds, we want to build the zero coupon yield. Okay, why would we want to do that? So I might be a bond trader in a specific uh, bond category. So I might be I might be buying uh, 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 bonds issued by banks, okay, or bonds issued by specific insurance companies, or bonds issued by a, a specific uh, the government of a country. 
uh, or it could be buying bonds issued by companies in some different sectors. Okay, so oil and gas, uh, mining, uh, whatever, pharmaceutical sector. And I want to construct a zero yield curve to make sure that all these bonds, okay, have the correct price given their risk. Okay, assuming that all the bonds of, of all these uh, entities uh, operating in the same sector have the same risk characteristics. Once this yield curve is built, I can spot, okay, uh, bonds here and there, which price, which prices are incorrect. Okay, and then I can buy or sell them and try to make money. So how do we construct a zero yield curve from bond prices? Because when the government publishes a yield curve, so the yield curve is a series of uh, interest rates that would apply to a zero coupon bond if this bond uh, were to exist. But there is no uh, 20 years zero coupon bond. There is no five year coup zero coupon bond. So the bond, the government only issues five year coupon bonds, 10 year coupon bonds. So when the government publishes a, a risk free uh, zero coupon uh, yield curve, well, the government does it by extracting these uh, zero coupon yields from actual uh, coupon paying bonds. Okay, uh, by performing the operation we'd be uh, doing in the following slides. So what's the first yield? So the first bond, bond A, pays 937.65 in one year. So if it's discounted at the one year rate, so the one year rate has to be equal to 6.65%. Now, how do we find the second year uh, zero coupon yield? So the price of B is 952.38. So what is B? It's one coupon in one year, face value plus coupon in two years. The first, a coupon to be received in one year has to be discounted at the uh, one year zero coupon yield, which we calculated earlier and was 6.65%. And the face value and coupon to be received in two years will be discounted at the two year uh, zero coupon yield. So we have one equation, one unknown. Uh, so we need to isolate Z2, and this gives us a two-year zero coupon yield of 7.15%. We do the same for bond C. So bond C has a price of 897.6. What does bond C uh, do? So bond C pays one coupon after one year, one coupon after two years, and face value plus coupon after three years. First coupon has to be discounted at the one year zero coupon yield of 6.65%. Second coupon has to be discounted at the two year zero coupon yield, uh, which we calculated earlier, which is 7.15%. And then we are searching for uh, the, the three year zero coupon yield, which we can isolate uh, here in our equation and uh, which gives us 7.45%. We do the same with bond D that has four years to maturity. So we have found already the one year zero uh, yield. We have found already the two year zero yield. We have found already the three year zero yield. So we are searching for the four year zero yield. We isolate it in our equation and that gives us 7.70%. Okay, interest rate risk. So a bond trader may be uh, interested in two types of gains. Uh, interest income and capital gain arising from a change in the bond price because market interest rates have varied over time. This is called interest rate risk. So if I invest in a bond and interest rates go up, well, my coupon, the coupon rate on my bond becomes less interesting. So the price of this compared to 
bonds uh, newly issued. So the price of this bond uh, should go down. If I own a bond with a given coupon rate and uh, interest rates go down, well, the coupon rate on my bond becomes more interesting compared to newly issued bonds, and that could uh, that should increase the price of my bond. So here we are interested in the percentage change in the value of a bond following a change in the yield to maturity or the market interest rates that apply to uh, uh, bonds with uh, similar risk, risk characteristics. So the two relationships uh, we will show in the coming slides and that you have to remember is that uh, the lower the coupon rate of a bond, the more sensitive uh, the price of this bond is to changes in market interest rates. All other things being equal, the longer the maturity of a bond, the more sensitive the price of this bond is uh, to changes in uh, market interest rates. Okay, so before we show the slides, okay, let's make sure we uh, understand these uh, two details. Take a zero coupon bond. So no coupon, face value at maturity. So let's compare one uh, coupon bond, which face value will be received next year, to another zero coupon bond, which face value will be received um, next week okay so next week is closer than uh, uh, closer to us than next year okay so both bonds have a yield to maturity of uh, uh, 10% okay and market interest rate go up so if market interest rates go up so I need to discount these two phase value at a much at a higher rate now Okay, so which one goes down the most? So for one of them, I'll receive the money next week. And for the other one, I'll receive the money uh, in one year. So for the one I, I, for which I will receive the money in one year, I the rate I applied, I applied to it, okay, is discounted over a longer period of time. And this rate just went up, which means that the, the present value of this payment will go down. Uh, much more uh, heavily than the bond that will pay me next week. Okay, if I have a zero coupon bond that expires in one year and I compare it to a zero coupon bond that expires in 30 years, and the rate I need to apply to each when I calculate these two uh, present values go up, well, one of these present values is discounted at one plus r to the power one. And the other present value is discounted at the rate one plus r to the power 30. Okay, if the interest rate I apply goes up, well, the present value discounted over, uh, calculated over 30 years will fall way more than the present value of the object discounted over a single year. So the longer the time to maturity, the more sensitive uh, the value, a present value must be. Okay. And if we look at the coupon rate, so we have two bonds expiring in five years. One has a 10% uh, coupon rate. The other one has a 2% uh, coupon rate. Okay. So for, for the 5% for the coupon rate bond, I have a whole bunch of payments that are discounted over periods closer than five years. For the 2% uh, coupon bond, I have much smaller payments that are discounted earlier than the face value. Okay, So overall for the bond, uh, the 2% coupon bond, uh, the value of this, uh, the value of the 2% coupon bond depends a lot more on the, the, the face value at the end than the 5% uh, um, uh, uh, coupon bond. So when in interest rates vary, 
the 5% coupon bond will be less sensitive to changes in interest rates than the 2% coupon bond. Okay, to understand that better, put the example at the extreme. So suppose uh, the coupon bond is a 100% coupon bond. So each period, it pays you the face value. Compare this bond to a zero coupon bond with the same time to maturity. So of course, the 100% the coupon bond makes payment way earlier than the zero percent, uh, than the, uh, the zero coupon bond. So the zero coupon bond will be way more sensitive to changes in market rates than the 100% uh, the uh, coupon bond, okay? So here's an example. So we have two bonds, okay, uh, that have all the same characteristics except for the time to maturity. So one bond has five years to maturity and the other one has 10 years to maturity. And the initial interest rate is 10%. What happens when the market rate falls to 5%? So the price of the bond with five years to maturity increases by 21%, while the, the price of the bond with 10 years to maturity increases by 38%. The percentage change is greater for the longer term bond. What if market rates increases to 15%? Well, the price of bond one with five years to maturity falls by 16.8% and the price of bond two with 10 years to maturity falls by 25%. The longer term bond has a greater percentage decrease in price than uh, the shorter maturity bond. Let's now consider two bonds with the same time to maturity but different coupon rates. One bond has a 5% coupon rate, the other one has a 10% coupon rate. So the 5%, so if the market rate is currently 10%, uh, the 5% coupon bond is selling at a discount and the 10% coupon bond is setting at par. So if interest rates fall to 5%, what happens to the 5% coupon bond? It goes up, its price goes up by 44%. What happens to bond two? Its price goes up by 38%. So the percentage change in price is larger for the bond with a smaller coupon rate. What happens if interest rates go up to 15%? So the price of bond one falls by 28% and the price of bond two falls by 25%. Okay, so the, the percentage decrease in uh, in price is larger for the bond with a smaller coupon rate. So there is a measure of interest rate sensitivity for a bond which is called duration. So we know that longer term bonds are more sensitive to interest rates than shorter term bonds. And when we compare two zero coupon bonds, we can tell right away that the bond with a longer time to maturity is more sensitive to interest rates than a bond with a shorter time to maturity. So if we can convert a coupon bond to its equivalent zero coupon bond in terms of interest rate sensitivity, so this uh, conversion, which we call the duration, could be a good measure of uh, interest rate Sen sensitivity that will allow us to compare uh, different bonds with different characteristics. So this is what duration does. We don't uh, calculate it in this course. We just introduce the concept. And finally, corporate bonds. We don't spend much time uh, on corporate bonds because they, they, they work in a similar way as uh, risk-free bonds. So corporate bonds have a risk of default. So because of the risk of default, you may not see, you may not receive all coupon payments, 
uh, or you may not receive the full face value at the end completely. So these bonds are riskier than risk-free bonds. So the discount rate that has to be used to discount their future cash flows has to include a premium over the risk-free rate. And then it's possible to build a yield curve with risky rates uh, in it. And this is the end of this lecture.